back in Detroit. They back in Detroit with that bitch. Okay. Ariana Frenchie Poop. It don't matter because, you know, eventually, I guess Diane seen, you know, Bird of Gorda, Gordy and Frenchie Poop having a good time without her. So she had to go back. Uh, Barry? You know? If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about Mary Wilson's Dream Girl, My Life as a Supreme Part. I don't know, because I'm trying to hurry up and get to uh, the coldest winter alpha. Part two. I already know how I'm pretty much going to um, read the book and how I'm going to present the book to you all. So I'm excited, you know? Not that this Mary Wilson book is not interesting, because it is, because child, I'm about to give y'all the tea, y'all. The first time I read this book, I was like, well, oh, okay. You know, but today, as a grown woman, as a 50-year-old, I said, oh, I see you, Diane, girl, blank. I see you. We left off. Okay, the Supremes is on and popping, okay? Barry DeGordy didn't ordered everybody in the Hitsville slash Motown. Okay, to cater to the Supremes. Okay, the temps, you ain't got to hit out right now. Go in there with Charlie and practice on them girls' steps for stopping the name of the love. Okay, uh, what is she doing? The Marvelettes, girl, I don't, okay, y'all okay right now, but take them outfits off. Take them to the cleaners, readjust them, make them better for the Supremes. You know, not really, but that's how serious Bird of Gordy was about making the Supremes Supreme. Now, this is where Barry Gordy's and Diana Ross' relationship is apparent to everybody in the history, okay? They was cracking jokes before, but they ain't cracking jokes no more. Why? Because at every turn, every chance that Diane gets, she runs back to the Barry Gordy and tells him everything. You heard me? Now, she hunching them too. She hunching them too. And I'm saying to myself, Jesus, what kind of meow does Diana Ross have that she can run through the team? You know how you know? dudes be. Okay. Blink. Ladies, let me give you a quick lesson. Let me, you know, hold on. You're, you're hunching one dude. Okay. You're hunching Ricky. Ricky? No, no, no. Fuck that. Smokey? You're hunching Smokey. Okay. Smokey done with her. You know why? Because Smokey wife... It's like, you better, uh, uh, I know you're down there with that Diane. Watch yourself, ninja, okay? So what he did was he went to bury the Gordy, bury the Gordy. I'm telling you, yeah, I'm going to do you a favor when I, you know, pass you, a, passing her along to you because, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, because they talk about us just like we talk about them. You keep that in mind. Matter of fact, men talk more than we do. And child, don't let them be locked up. Oh, my God. They're going to give all the tea. It had been hard enough dealing with her when all we had to deal with was her temper. Knowing that even the most personal argument or discussion, even if it had absolutely nothing to do with our work, would be relayed to Barry the Gordy. Okay? And that fostered an environment of distrust. Blocked the if you come down here and be, you know, disrespectful to the Diane, that's not going to happen. I don't feel as if I'm being disrespecting. I'm disrespectful. I'm just repeating her history. I'm just saying what the book say. This the book. This ain't me saying that this is the Mary Wilson. I'm not saying this. I'm not being disrespectful to my baby. I love her. 
What are you all talking about? This is the part where Mary Wilson is reflecting back on uh, where they began. Okay. Mary Wilson said the part that hurt the most was that these girls grew up together. We okay. remember, you know, the humble beginnings, you know, and now all of a sudden Diane is grand. You grand girl. My sister is best friends with your sister. What are you doing? Your family comes to my house for dinner. My family goes to your house for dinner. All three of our families are a family. Diane, who is you now? We were seen on the Ed Sullivan show. What is that? Hula? Hula Badoo? The Hollywood Palace? The Tonight Show? The Dean Martin Show? The Red Skelton Show? And countless specials. The girls, okay, now they the Supremes. They the Supremes. You hear me? They not just, you know, them bitches over there in the lobby, okay? They the Supremes now. And now they got them a Supreme overhaul, child. Their wardrobe then upgraded. Them wigs then upgraded, you know? Diane got all the girls wearing false eyelashes and false, you know, fingernails the Lee press on. Yeah, they, they Supreme. That's their look. Supremous. Motown was anxious to solidify its relationship with English and European record distributors. And so a tour was scheduled to begin in mid-March 1965. This was to become the infamous ghost tour. Okay, now let me tell you why it was a ghost tour, child. Okay, because the whole Motown went, right? But them people over there wasn't feeling nobody but the Supremes. Okay, and the Marvelettes, that's it. There okay. were avid Motown fans over England and the continent, but it was clear that reporters in the smaller towns really didn't understand what the music was all about. And for the first time in a long time, as many of us could remember, we were playing to have field houses. The worst part of all, and the reason the tour was called the Ghost Tour was what many of the foreign publications did to our photographs. One day, we were scanning a local publication for a review. Oh my God, what is that? Flo said, one of the dudes from The Temptation was like, uh, I think that's you, Flo, that's you. Me? How's that me? So this is what happened with the publications. All of them over there, okay? All right, but the white photographers from all these white publications, okay? And I know you're like, well, where are all the black ones? Baby, it's 19 in the 60s. Baby, it wasn't too many, um, you know, black media outlets then. Ebony, Essence, Jet, that's over there in America, bitch. They ain't got Ebony uh, Europa yet. So you got them people taking pictures of the black folks not using the right lighting. They don't understand that you can't put black folks uh, up against the sun. We got to face the sun. Financially, the tour was a flop, but everyone at Motown saw it as a means of promoting the other acts and making the foreign distributors happy. And so, yes, that's how you do it, girl. That's how you do it. The Supremes is hot over here in the Europa. Okay, the Supremes is hot over here. So why don't we sneak in uh, all the up and coming acts? That's what you do. It's called the opening acts for the news that you really want to see. We okay. had left Detroit in high spirits, thinking that the Miracles, the Vandellas, the Temptations, and Stevie Wonder would conquer the English and European markets as easily as we had. But this was not to be. Okay, that's why they called it the, the ghost tour. We started out traveling by bus. But Barry got fed up with, you know, being on the bus. You know, them Sagittarians, they can't sit still. You know, there's something wrong with Murray them. couldn't take the pressure. Now, Murray, smart mouth ass, says to Barry the Gordy, now you see how we feel. Barry cut his eye at her like, bitch, I don't like you any fucking way. He didn't say that, but as we move forward, you're going to see what's going on between Barry the Gordy and Diana versus the Supremes, okay? Because this is just the beginning. So he sort right. of grinned, then instructed his assistant, Don Foster, let's hire a limo. A limo, when you got all these other acts still on his bus? So it was the Supremes, Barry and Don, traveling through Great Britain in a stretch limousine. We saw Bristol, Cardiff, 
Manchester, and Newcastle, Newcastle, and numerous small towns in between. Now that's more Bird and Gordy style. The, 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 the bus ain't for me. That's for you ninjas over there. That's for you worker bees, baby. I'm the king bee, all right? And the king bee ain't finna be on the bus with the worker bees. Dusty Springfield, one of England's biggest female vocalists, was one of Motown's strongest supporters, and it was reported that she convinced the BBC to do a television special on our music. We taped The Sound of Motown during this trip. Dusty was the hostess, and I enjoyed working with her. She and the crew treated each of us like stars, but it was clear that Martha and the Vandellas were their favorites. Soon after the show aired, Barry held a lavish birthday celebration for Diane. Happy birthday. Murray Wilson said it was two things that resonated in her that day of that birthday party. Happy birthday, Diane, or happy belated birthday, Diane the Boss Ross. Okay, come around here with that bullshit. Come around here, talk bad about my Diana Ross. I'm gonna block your ass. Okay, now you know, like I said, these ain't my words. These is Mary Wilson's words. Okay, I'm just reading this to y'all. But I love Diana. Okay, I'm gonna love her a little more, or y'all might love her a little more after this. There was two things that Mary Wilson said was an issue. Okay, for this party, the first thing was that uh, Diana Ross was already acting like she was a superstar. Okay, you know how she can do, Barry, we love you, Barry. We are here for you, Barry, all of us. It doesn't matter who leaves. All that matters is who comes back, baby. The second thing that resonated with Mary Wilson was the fact that uh, just a year ago, Diane was sitting in the lobby with us trying to get Barry DeGordy's attention. Now she's a superstar and then Barry DeGordy. Okay, so Murray Wilson is like, so it's Flo. Murray Wilson says that uh, Donna Ross is at the party. She's floating above us all. This bitch then ascended to supreme greatness. The first lady of Motown. Child would have kicked her ass in her back. Get your ass off that damn pedestal. You ain't get down here with me. Murray and I became very good friends as we started traveling more. Diane chose to stay in her hotel rooms when we had time off. Barry and I would get up early and go out to see the city. We both wanted to learn as much as we could about everything we saw. For example, Barry and I would jump in a cab, then spend the whole ride asking the driver how to say things in a native language. Barry, you okay. should have been doing like this, Barry. Uh, what's going on between you and Diane? If y'all became very good friends. If you were the friends that you assume y'all were, then why aren't you asking the questions? Or is it just you're just scared to that of that fire, that Sagittarian fire? Now, we know that Mary Wilson does not want to make waves at all. Okay, girl? But if you and Barry in the cab together by yourself, touring the damn Europa, Okay, why the hell you ain't asking questions or be a little dirty? Now this is this is messed up, but this is my this is this is my lower me talking right now. Okay, y'all don't judge me. This is the lower nay talking. Okay, the lower vibration nay, low vibration nay right now. Okay, girl, why didn't you try bury yourself? Why didn't you put your hand on his knee and be like, bury? You know what? I think I wanna, you know. Try something different, you know? Barry and Flo also had a close dynamic, but it was different. We liked him immensely. Flo, however, wasn't one to pal around like I was. Her relationship with Barry was based on a mutual affection and respect. And at this time, we all felt like four very lucky good friends on a wonderful adventure. Murder Wilson, he went on them little excursions with you because he was trying his hand with you. All he wanted you to give him was the okay to say, give it to me, baby. Barry never let us out of his sight. And I began to think of him as the fourth supreme. 
If he couldn't be with us, he had one of his executive assistants, such as Dick Scott or Don Foster, accompany us. Now, pay attention, because I'm going to read this part. You know, now you know me. I might stop a minute, but this is important. Okay? Lesbians, pay attention. Okay? Bisexuals, pay attention. Okay? Curiosities, pay attention. In Paris, I'm Barry and Diane befriended a black French model named Arian Scorps. Mm -hmm. Barry was taken with her And Diane liked whatever Barry liked So Arian became her new best friend First of all, how is it that you're going to allow a woman To come into your relationship with Barry? It's bad enough you got to share him with your wife. Now you about to share him with some uh, beautiful black model and you, Diane? Oh, y'all sharing all right. Blink. Y'all sharing all right. Okay? They were so smitten with each other that they decided to bring the French bitch back to America down to the Motown with them. Murray Wilson said that the lady was prancing around Motown like she owned it. Like, oh, I am Barry the Gordies and Diane the Rosses. Girlfriend, okay, because that's what it is. That's what it was. It doesn't happen like that where, you know, you, you know, allow your man to be smitten with another woman and then invite her to hang out with y'all here in the Frenchie pool and back home. Barry okay. always was a collector of interesting people and Diane constantly craved new diversions. Arian was different and exotic and she was no doubt Flattered by Diane's and Barry's attention. That's because she was the main character. Mary Wilson, just say what you want to say. Just say what you want to say. She was the main character in the film. Blink. They back in Detroit. They back in Detroit with that bitch. Okay. Ariana Frenchie Poo. It don't matter because, you know, eventually, I guess, Diane seen, you know, Barry the Gorda, Gordy and Frenchie Poo having a good time. Without her. So she had to go. Bye. Uh, Barry. You know I make a whole lot of money around here. You better send this back, bitch back to, to Frenchie Poo. They back in Detroit. You know they always got to hit the ground running. That's what it's about. Hitting the ground running. Okay. So. They hitting the ground running. The next stop is the Copa Cabana. Okay. We know that that's a big friggin' deal. Just eight months after our first big hit. The Supremes were Motown's greatest commodity. But. As great as the Motown machine was, it could work only on a couple of acts at a time. As a result, several other acts began receiving less attention than they deserved, especially since Barry was now spending so much time with us. Martha and the Vandellas, for example, saw their position erode at this time. Writers and producers still wanted to work with them, and they were still making great records. But Motown was still a small company, and our success was just too big for the setup. Okay, so do you hear what they're saying? Right now, they working with the Supremes. Martha, okay, I see you, but not right now. In okay. mid-1965, Flo, Diane, and I moved into homes on Buena Vista Drive in Detroit. So during 1965, all the girls ended up moving on the same, in the same development, right? But they did not know that they all lived in the same development. But I think Barry Gordy just didn't want his girls to be too far away from each other. He needed them to be close together, you know, just in case some bullshit happened. I need you to go over Flow House and find out what the hell is going on over there. Okay? But during the time that they moved into this, this development where all of them lived, okay, Flo and Mary got really close. Diane, on the other hand, she spent most of her time with Barry. Okay? Now, I'm not mad at her for, uh, you know, nurturing her relationship with her boyfriend. But don't he got a wife? Barry the Gordy not married? Flo moved many members of her family into a house a block and a half down the street from mine and across the street from Diane's. I first realized that the Supremes had grown bigger than the three of us after Barry heard through the grapevine that I was planning to install mirrors on my bedroom ceiling. Okay. 
How does Burry know? Did you tell Diane that you planned on having a freaky night? Or did Diane tell you about her, Burry, and Frenchie Pooh's freaky night? Do you know Burry the Gordy controlling ass went over and was like, I don't think you should get mirrors on your ceiling, Mary. What you talking about, Barry? How you know I'm finna get mirrors on my ceiling? What, what do you have to do with my pleasurable nights? I'm lost. It was okay. jarring to her because of the fact that how something so personal ended up on Barry the Gordy's table. That's none of your business, bro. That's none of your business. If I wanted to bring a monkey into this damn house, that's none of your business, bro. Though I resented the idea of Barry having anything to do with what's going on in my house, I agree with him. Now, she said, you know, although she was pissed off that Barry DeGordy is giving his opinion on my house and my freakiness, he was right, okay? Because of the fact that they were so hot, they constantly had, you know, journalists at their house, you know, interviewing them, right? And trust me, the journalist is going to notice mirrors on the ceiling. I'm lost because who let the journalists in their bedroom? I'm lost. Mary, where was you trying to put the mirrors on the ceilings? I'm lost. <laughs> quick, quick, I'm sorry. One time I was over this dude house. We wasn't, okay, I was just going over there because I was bored and I ain't had nothing to do. Right, child. And anyway, he had a water bed in the basement in his mammy's house, okay? He was like, come sit on the bed with me. Now, I'm sitting, I'm sitting on the chair, not on the bed, okay? Because... On the bed, over the bed, it had all these damn mirror tiles, but some of them was missing, okay? So that's telling me that them motherfuckers got the propensity to fall, okay? So I'm sitting in the chair, mm -hmm, okay? He tapping the bed, come over here, sit on me. Have you ever been on a water bed? Yeah, I've been on a water bed before. He was like, come try this one. I ain't about to try that water bed with you, bro. He was like, man, leaned back. Okay? Like he was mad. He was like, man, and then leaned forward. I swear to God, one of them mirror tiles fell right where his head was. I'm not getting on that bed with you. Matter of fact, bye, nigga, bye. Bye, bye, bye. By now, we each received a weekly allowance of $500. Anytime we needed more money, for example, to buy a car, we would tell Motown and it would be issued to us. Issued to you? Mm hmm If it was issued to you, that means that it still belonged to Motown, baby. They was just letting you use it. In addition, what? our clothes and other travel expenses were deducted from our accounts. During my years at Motown, I never even saw my tax return. This would strike most people as hard to believe, but it was impossible to think that everything we were told wasn't true. Okay? That's because they believed in the Motown. Why? Why would you believe in a place where the Diane is from the Burry? The Four Tops, Duke Levi Stubbs, Lawrence Payton, and Ronaldo Obi Benson had been together almost 10 years when they signed to Motown in 1964. Okay, now the dude, who was the dude? Duke was the one who said, oh yeah, I'm about to put that brown chick on Mary, okay? Oh, and it worked because Mary moved Duke into her house. Why Duke ain't got his own goddamn house? Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now remember this, the same people you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves you, babe, bet. Have a good one.